Hi, welcome to this Simply Maya Free Friday tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to cover particle morphing in Maya. It's going to have a variety of applications. You can use it to then map fluids to, uh, instance geometry to. I'm not going to cover this in a great level of detail in this quick Free Friday tutorial. I'm just going to show you simply basically how to morph particles from one object to another. So we'll get started by creating a couple of simple pieces of geometry. So I'm just going to use a sphere and a box here. Get them about the same size. This doesn't matter, you can morph particles from completely randomly sized objects. You could morph the particles, say, being emitted from a car shape to a tree. I'm just trying to keep this simple. Now I am going to want some extra Geo on this, so I'll just go down here and give it some more divisions. There we go, that should be enough. Okay, now as we're doing particle morphing, we'll need some form of particle emitter. I'm going to use N Dynamics N Particles and just create a simple emitter. So I'm going to leave it on points, um, just create a standard emitter. So if I just go now, actually. I will increase our number of frames here so we can get a better look at this in the viewport and as you can see our particles are falling straight through the floor uh, this is because in N-Dynamics the nuclear solver has gravity turned on by default I think we'll turn that off just get rid of our grid here so we will flip the attribute editor go into the nuclear solver and Actually, a better way of doing this, rather than turning the gravity off here, a better way to do it would just be under dynamic properties of the end particle one shape node. Click ignore solver gravity. And then you can see our particles just sort of split out here. I'll turn my um, shading. Actually, we'll do where it is. I'm not sure how well you will see these particles on the video but I think it should be fine so our first goal here is to get these particles from this emitter to this object we then want them to fly from this emitter be attracted to the sphere finally form the sphere and then leave this sphere be attracted to this cube and go to the cube and form a cube so basically we want to morph or we want the particles to go up change into a sphere and then we want the sphere to morph to a square. Now in a more traditional morph this square would actually be on top of this sphere so we get a more seamless translation but in this simple example I want to make it as clear as possible what is actually occurring so I'll leave these uh, some distance apart. Now I just want to bring up my outliner here and I'm going to select my end particle 1 object I'm going to select my cube and under n particles I'm going to hit goal I'm going to bring up its option box and goal weight um, is basically how fast your particles are going to be attracted to your particular goal um, so at point 50 this is half speed at one they will just jump straight from the emitter straight to the um, to the cube now if I just create that I'll give you probably a better look at what I'm talking about. So as you can see our particles are flying up here and they are somewhat attracted to our cube. Not really the result we were looking for however so we'll need to tweak a couple of other parameters. And one of the first things you can tweak is under goal um, uh, for the poly shape here, goal weights. If I was to change this to 0.1 you'll see now that I get a lot more attraction to the cube. They don't fly off quite so much. Where, oops, let's go back to that. If I change this to say one, they will just jump straight to the cube. So you don't see anything, they jump straight to. So point one, they kind of overshoot and oscillate backwards and forwards all around this cube. Now we want them to kind of shoot up there, have a nice sort of oscillation for a small time and then map perfectly to this cube. A couple of ways we can do this. Um, one of the simplest is to go under the end particle shape 
and under its dynamic properties change its conserve value I'll go 0.2 and you'll see what this does so we got this much slower approach this is probably a bit too low 0.9 this can be a quite a sensitive value the difference between 0.9 and 0.95 should be quite great I'll show you what I mean so there we go we're going up to our cube albeit a bit slowly. If I change this to 0.95 now you'll see we do actually get quite a big difference in speed. Okay, so 0.99 and you should see again quite a big jump in the um, the reaction we get. So be aware when you're playing with this conserve value that a small tiny tweak in the 0.0 whatever category can make quite a difference so if you are playing with that when you're using um, M particles be aware that you don't really want to go as I showed you initially from such a drastic number as 0.1 to 0.9 um, small small numbers here can make a large difference so this is kind of fine for me so what I want is about a hundred frames worth maybe a hundred and fifty frames worth of particles up to here I then want that to remain static for a minute and then I want these particles to go over here and morph into a sphere. So how I'm going to achieve that is first I'm going to keyframe the emission from this end particle emitter. So I actually want to start with more particles. So we'll start with about 200 particles, set a key, go up to frame 100, mm, keep that 200, we'll just do a it's probably better just to do a stepped key, but I'm doing this quickly, so I'll just cheat a little bit. Um, so I should have a constant, whoops, constant rate of particle emission here, 200, yes I do. Um, and then by frame, say 150, I want the particle emission to stop completely. So let's check that. Okay, I have my particles shoot up, conform to this sphere. Okay, now at frame 300, uh, sorry, at frame, say, where are we, 250, probably be good enough. No, actually at frame 300, right the first time, these particles will have been static here for a while, I now want them to jump. So in order to get them to do that, I'm going to have to again select my M particle 1, select my uh, sphere this time, go up to end particles goal okay I'll just assign it with a goal value of zero so it won't do anything and if we replay you'll see that we haven't really had any effect we still get what we want but now what I want to do at frame 300 I want to turn one goal off and turn the other one on so under the end particle shape node you'll now see under goal weights and dynamics I have two I have one for the cube and one for the sphere. Now we set um, this to point 0.1 what we need to do is by frame 300 turn it off. So at frame um, let's see where that actually comes in here. Yeah I think we might even go up to 350. Again this is a really quick way of doing this and you're not going to tweak all these values get the frames exactly where you want them for the best result. I just want to show you very simply how to get these particles to behave um, in a morph like manner. You can use this to then assign fluids to these particles to do some fluid sculpting, uh, a myriad of, of great stuff you can do with this. But for right now we're here on frame 50, we have these where we want them, we now want them to jump over here so I'm going to set this goal here to zero so this will now have um, no effect on these in fact we were at point 0.1 I believe so I'm going to set a key uh, jump to 51, set this to zero and set another key so here we go Let's just check that it's fine it is okay so at frame 351 when this is zero we now want to set this goal to have an attraction so I'm going to set it at point two so they should jump over relatively quickly 
I'm going to set the key, go back to 350. Obviously, I'll need to set that to zero. Set the key. Just make sure that is actually. And now you should see our particles jump from the sphere to the circle really quickly. Um, let me get us a few more frames there. Let's go up to, say, 800 frames. Okay, and then we simply morph from circle to sphere. Now, obviously, um, if I set this goal weight here, uh, I believe it was keyed on frame 351, which would be here. I'll set it to 0.1, so we're not doing quite such a quick jump between the two. So there you go, a particle morph from square to circle. And I can obviously move these about after the fact. So if I wanted to do a more traditional morph from, say, a larger square, um, and I'm going to hide both the square and the circle so we can just see the particles. So I'm going to hide, and I'm going to hide. And now we should just get a view of these particles. Square, circle, much more traditional morph. Okay, I hope that's been an introduction to you to goal-orientated particles within Maya. As I say, a ton of stuff you can do with that. Um, I hope you experiment. Comment below if there's anything you want to know. And we will have a more in-depth tutorial available on this in the near future. Thanks for watching.